All right, everybody, welcome to the 90th Academy Awards. And if you want to know who is going to win and what everybody is wearing and what the stars are saying, then you've come to the right place. This is People and Entertainment Weekly's Red Carpet Live, sponsored by Farmers Insurance, which has J.K. Simmons, an Oscar winner, in their commercials. So that is appropriate. I have here with me, and I'm Jess Cagle, the editorial director of People and EW. I have here with me 300 of People's VIP fans, and we're giving you a bird's eye view of the red carpet from the bleachers, and right down there on the red carpet, and this is good news, you won't have to look at me all night, is People editor J.D. Heyman and People TV's Lola Oganike, and they are gonna be talking to all the stars as they arrive. J.D. and Lola, can you hear me? Is everything working? We Everything can is hear you. We can hear you. They're just their cheers oh, for good. us is so deafening. <laughs> they can't get enough. Who are of you? Can't get enough. Who are you looking forward? Who are you looking forward to seeing well, tonight? Really everybody, but most excited right now for the cast and the director of Get Out. Yes. Had a huge night last night at the Indie Spirit Awards. I am coming out of the sunken place and very excited <laughs> to watch them at the Academy Awards. And also Frances McDormand, one of the funniest, smartest, mm -hmm. most outrageous speakers there is. So I hope to see her give a great speech tonight. We'll see. We don't know, but we'll see. Yeah, I'm excited about Allison Janney. She swept up the entire award season. She's looked amazing on the red carpet. And I feel like she's going to skate away with the grand prize tonight. I think she's going to land a triple. I think she's going to land a triple axle. That's I'm right. Also, speaking of triples, Mary J. Blige has landed a double. And I'm excited to see her, too. Best Supporting Actress nod and Best Song nod. So Mary J. Blige. Two nods. She's amazing. She's already made history. She's the only person to do that ever. So she's already a winner tonight. How about you, Jess? Who are you excited yeah, for? Yeah, that's a good question. You know, I always get I always get excited to see Octavia Spencer because you know it wouldn't be an Oscars without Octavia Spencer getting nominated. Now she's nominated three times and one of the nicest people in the world. So I'm always rooting for her. I want to remind everybody. If you have questions for the stars who are going to be here at the Oscars tonight, tweet your questions to hashtag Red Carpet Live, and we will try to get your question to the stars on the red carpet. Everybody keep it clean. We are not asking Meryl Streep something appropriate. Also, on the carpet, we have got one of the smartest people in showbiz, Jared Hall from Entertainment Weekly. Jared, you know everything about the Oscars. You know everything that's going to happen tonight. What are you excited about? Yes, you're right. I do have ESP. I am excited. You mentioned Octavia Spencer. She is in one of my favorite movies of the year, The Shape of Water, directed by the incomparable uh, Guillermo del Toro. So I'm excited to see all of them. Uh, Lola mentioned Allison Janney. I'm excited to see her on-screen daughter, Margot Robbie, who uh, I'm sure is just going to light up this red carpet when she walks in, which, by the way, it's just feet away from uh, here where I'm standing to my left where they're all going to walk in. So uh, we, will, we will be checking them as as they walk in, we're going to get those fan questions to them. And uh, you know who else I'm excited for, though he just passed by? Uh, Wolfgang Puck just went by with all the food. And if I'd had a chance, I would have snagged some of those, uh, the, the, the chocolate, the, the beef. I would have thrown it up to you, to you, Jess. You're right up here behind me. I get, I, would, I get excited about people actually throwing food at us. And if you see Wolfgang Puck, I again, I want you to grab a pig in a blanket. And I want you to bring it, Ooh. bring it right up here. All right, I'm going to be checking yeah, in with JD and, and Lola and Jared all night long as the stars arrive on the red carpet, and they're going to be here with interviews. But right now, I have got Sarah Vilcomerson, and she's going to help me predict who's going to win tonight. So if you are going to an Oscar viewing party and you have to fill out a ballot, stick around because Sarah, who is really good at predicting, is going to make you win. Uh, Sara, what movie are you personally rooting for tonight? Personally, I'm rooting for Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri. And that and that's like it's a close it best is. picture race, right? Yeah, it's and we'll, very close. We'll get to that in a minute. But I also, before we get started, I wanted to ask you, what are the big headlines going into the ceremony? Well, for starters, Shape of Water is coming in with 13 nominations, which is a huge amount. It's almost, almost tying the record, right? Yes. With La La Land, Titanic, 
and All About Eve, which all have 14 nominations. They're very close. But also, we have Daniel Day-Lewis is nominated for Phantom Thread. That might be his last ever performance. He says he's retiring from he acting. Says. I hope it's not true. Unless he's he the says. share of great actors, in which case right. he'll just keep on acting. Right. And we have a lot of historic nominations for uh, women and people of color in writing and directing. All right. The, um, the, the first one that I want to break down is Jordan Peele. Yes. Right? He's a huge night for him. And like you said, the nomination is already historic. It's a huge night for him. He also won Best Feature at the Independent Spirit Awards last night, which is pretty good. And he's only the fifth African-American to be nominated in the category of directing. And only the fourth nominated for original screenplay. That's right. And he has the Holy Trifecta, which is being nominated for writing, picture, and director. That's only happened a couple of times before. He's the first African-American, but it all, it all, the only other people who've done that, Warren Beatty for Heaven Can Wait and James L. Brooks for Terms of Endearment. Good movies. Those are good movies That's right there. True. What about Dee Reese from Mudbound? She's the first African-American woman to be nominated for adapted screenplay. She and the only other uh, African American nominated in writing was Suzanne de Passe for Lady Sings the Blues. Back in 1973. I know. Yeah, that's incredible. Uh, like I'm, I'm so rooting for Dee Reese tonight. Me too. Um, and for Mudbound, her yeah. cinematographer Rachel Morrison is the first woman to ever be nominated in cinematography. In 90 years, one woman nominated for cinematography, no. which is incredible. And uh, so I'm excited for Rachel Morrison, Greta Gerwig. Ugh. The writer-director of Lady Bird having a huge night. Only the fifth woman to ever be nominated, and she would only be the second woman to ever win after Catherine Bigelow. Um, Guillermo del Toro, he's looking like a like he's looking definitely like the front runner for winning Best Director. I think so, yeah, and he's only the third Mexican-born director to ever be nominated. And he also has the trifecta tonight. He does, along with Jordan Peele. I know. He's a writing, screenplay, and Best Picture. And picture, yeah. I mean, sorry, screenplay, directing, and Best Picture, and. This is also Denzel Washington's ninth nomination, his eighth nomination for, for acting. And I think he already has the record for most nominations by an African-American man. So he would just be topping himself. Um, Meryl Streep and Daniel Day-Lewis. Oh my God. If either of them wins tonight, they tie the record for the most Oscars ever won by an actor. And I think Katherine Hepburn currently has that record, she right? She has that record. She has four. Both Daniel and Meryl have three. And, and by the way, Meryl's the most Oscar-nominated actor on the planet. She has like 99 <laughs> nominations. She has 99. 99. 90, not or an exaggeration. 21. Or not 21. An exaggeration. Yeah. All right, the stars are starting to arrive, Sara. And um, before before we go to the next thing, I want to ask you, how did you decide what to wear tonight? Oh, because even I have a problem with that. I had a lot of problems, but the good people of Guilt Group lent me this dress oh, that's um, nice. by Thea. Yeah, that was very, very nice, nice of them. It was. What did you like about it? Um, I like that it's sort of warm and um, it's forgiving on the bottom. I was going to ask if you were cold. <laughs> no, I feel great. No, okay. Yeah. Okay, good. All right. What about you? Um, I'm wearing Ralph Lauren, Looks as always, because, yeah. like, you know, huge uh, imagination. I'm also going to be here tonight with a woman who knows a lot about fashion, and that's Andrea Laventhal, People's Style and Beauty Director. But before we bring her out, we're going to go to a video of Andrea showing us how she picked her dress for the red carpet tonight. Hi, I'm Andrea Laventhal, Style and Beauty Director at People, and I'm here at the Whitby Hotel in New York. This is a real-life fashion fantasy. Netta Porte has turned this room into a red carpet style suite because I'm going to the Oscars and I need to find a dress. So I called in an expert. Elizabeth Vondergoltz, she is the global buying director at net porte She knows everything there is about evening wear and she's gonna help me pick the perfect dress. Elizabeth, talk to me about all this. I think it depends on what kind of look you're trying to go for. I think there's sort of three categories I always think of. So there's big drama, like do you want everyone to look at you when you enter the room? Yes. <laughs> Always. <laughs> right. Or there is the simple chic, I know that I look beautiful, my skin is glowing, and I'm fabulous, so I can wear something super simple, like a suit, or a jumpsuit, something Love very that. plain. Or there's someone who just loves high shine, sequins, feathers, that sort of thing. Check, check, check. I like all of those things. Tell me some of the stuff you're seeing in formal wear that you're loving right now. I don't know, I want something really special, something that feels 
current but not too trendy. So what are you loving? For the sort of more sort of simple chic category, I love this Brandon Maxwell jumpsuit. I just think it's so chic. It's gonna show off your skin. It's gonna show off your face. If you wanna go shiny but simple, Ooh. here's this Naeem Khan jumpsuit. Okay, right? look at that. Which I think here you're getting a little bit of both. Is right. it weird that that looks comfortable? Well, this is, I always say, like it's like a hostess. You know, like, yeah. welcome to my house. Welcome to my house, which I wish yeah. this was my house. So I think like this is super, I don't know, it's really comfortable, it's easy, it's still glamorous. So is something like this considered trendy. I want to be able to wear it again, but in this age of Instagram where everyone posts a picture, I don't want it to be so recognizable. So how do you avoid buying something that's trendy versus something that's maybe on trend? When you look at something like this, like you can't necessarily say like you can't wear this to several events. And I think right. that it's not about trend. It's just a really chic, simple black and white jumpsuit. Okay. Well, Elizabeth, there's only one thing left to do. Try them on. Sarah Ball, our market editor from People, is also here because I requested a full style squad to make this decision. All right, guys, are we ready? So excited. Ready. Wow, that is incredible. I'd like to thank the Academy <laughs> and most of all, Oscar de la Renta for making this happen. Gorgeous. I think white now is a staple color to wear the evening events. It's just chic and simple. All right, all I need is the diamonds and I'm good to go in this one. <laughs> It's a very <laughs> bright color and it's a very sexy silhouette. Do we think it's too much or just enough? It's just enough. Okay, you're just gonna have to tune into the live show to see which dress I choose or if I somehow manage to wear all three of them. All right, now we are back with Andrea. How did you finally pick the dress? And this is what you're wearing, and it's great. I That's a dress great color. Four. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I tried on four. three, and I was like, mm, I want number four. <laughs> it's by Galvan. Netta Porte has too many options. I was like changing up until the last minute. It made me feel like a real celebrity. That's fantastic. Yeah. It looks great. Thank you. I'm actually really comfortable. Oh, that's good. It's you're nice not cold. Body. I worry about you being cold. I, don't, I will suffer for fashion. Okay, it's a little yeah. it's a little chilly in the Oscars chilly. tonight. Yeah. All right. Um, what are you expecting to see on the carpet tonight? What kind of trends? So what's so interesting about this red carpet season is just all of the different ways people have expressed themselves through fashion. We've seen the traditional fun things, capes and feathers and sequins, but we also have seen stars wearing all black to support a cause. So it's going to be an interesting night. We'll see. We'll see a lot of glam, but we might see some serious statements as well. I think we'll see statements, but I but I, I feel like after the Globes, where everybody wore black, people really turned it up a notch after that. It, was, it's, it, it has been a really interesting season. Who has really dazzled you on the red carpet this season? Allison Janney, and I'll tell you why. She's not a traditional fashion person. She's not known for taking over-the-top risks, but carpet after carpet, she has looked absolutely stunning and she's so statuesque and that performance she gave in Itania, the whole combination, I love her. And now the Time's Up movement has really sensitized people to the fact that something, something was a little off in the way sometimes red carpets were covered, the mm -hmm. way we talked about them, the, even, even the way the stars approached them, where it became less about the work, mm -hmm. which is what people are here to celebrate, yep. and it became more about the competition among women and pitting women against each other. So how has that impacted, A, the way the media approaches events like this, and also how stars dress for the red carpet? So it's so interesting because I think what we're all seeing is that fashion can really speak louder than words. And stars are becoming more aware of the message they're sending through their style choices on the red carpet. They can really make a statement and that's powerful. It's not a one dimensional conversation anymore. It's not just who are you wearing, it's why are you wearing it. Tell me more about it. And it's, and it's also given way, sort of ironically, to being conscious of celebrating the art of fashion. Yes, it's and a not, yeah. Everyone still wants to look glamorous and feel good, but 
we don't want to abandon, you know, all of that. So it's it's interesting. It's it's a really interesting season. All right. Well, I can't wait to hear. I can't wait to see what's happening tonight. And you'll be back oh, I'll to be back. fill us in on the best looks and trends of the red carpet. Right now, I'm going to throw it over to JD and Lola because last year, as you know, there was a real fiasco <laughs> with the best picture Oscar envelopes when Warren Beatty and Faye Dunaway came out and had the wrong envelope, announced La La Land, but it was really Moonlight. So I want to go to them and see how is the Oscars going to address that this year, J.D. and Lola, and what else can we expect to see uh, at tonight's ceremony? Well, it's going to be very interesting, Jess, because as you know, it's the 90th birthday of the Oscars, so it would have been a special night anyway if we hadn't had that little trauma last year. We are expecting that Warren and Faye are going to be back. It looks like we think that they are going to present uh, the big award that they presented last year, but we'll see. Spoiler alert, a little bit of a spoiler alert. They're all cheering for Lola, <laughs> the incandescent Lola in her red carpet red. Lola, are you gonna be excited to see how they pull this off? I am excited to see how they pull this off. I think they deserve a do-over. Everyone was blaming them for the mishap. It totally was not their fault. They did what they were told to do, open the envelope, read a name, it was the wrong name. It's not their fault. So Warren Beatty, Faye Dunaway, I'm rooting for you. You're gonna get it right this year and we're gonna know who won. Now the question is, who's gonna win big tonight? That is the question. Absolutely. And we do know that the, the accountants will be on hand. Expect them to come in for a little ribbing this year, given think, what happened last year. Yeah, I think Jimmy and Kimmel's going to we'll have see. a good yeah. time roasting the accountants this year. But I also think the accountants are not going to be tweeting. They're not going to be taking pictures. There is no social media for the accountants <laughs> this year, because apparently that's what got them into trouble yeah. last year. So expect them to be in a corner by themselves with nothing to do but hand over an yeah. envelope. No backstage selfies. <laughs> no backstage selfies. But I will say, no. uh, when we asked Jimmy Kimmel about it, he said, you know, they had their big joke last year, so he wasn't expecting to do a lot of big jokes about them. But there will be, and there will also, I should say, Jess, there'll be a lot of stars from, from past Oscar-winning movies, uh, legends of the stage and screen, who will be here. Rita Moreno wearing a dress that's 56 years old, the dress she wore when she won a Best Supporting Actress award for West Side Story. She's wearing the same dress. Bow down to her that she can still fit into Fits it. It's like a glove. Bow down. Unbelievable. She's a Bow down. She was actually on my show Couch Surfing the other day. She was extraordinary, and she's really looking forward to this evening. That woman's got fire, and she's ready to have a good time tonight. So, yes, yeah, she is one to watch on the red carpet. She's going to be hanging out be with Jennifer hot. Lawrence and Jodie Foster, everybody. It's going to be huge. It's going to be huge. All right, gang, yes. we cannot Come wait. Up and there. You can bet that Jimmy Kimmel, Jimmy Kimmel is not going to let them off the hook. He is not going to let them off the hook. Okay, we were talking about just now, you know, the, 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 the big reveal for what's going to win Best Picture. So I'm back here with Entertainment Weekly, Sarah Vakarmerson, and we are going to start going through the big categories, and we're going to tell you who's going to win. Now, Sara, let's start with Best Supporting Actress. You've got Mary J. Blige. She's not only nominated in this category, she also is nominated for Best Song, Same Movie. Yeah, both for Mudbound, and yeah. she's, it's the first time anybody's been nominated the same year for song and acting. It's Mary J. Blige. And of course, it's Mary J. Mary Blige. Blige yeah. um, Alice and Janney, your favorite? Everybody's favorite. I mean, really? Right? I know. I mean, I, West Wing, Mom. All, all of that. She's never, first Oscar nomination, never won, but she has like... She's got a truckload of Emmys. And she's been winning everything leading up to the Oscars. Yeah, yeah. And also, it's not surprising because she is literally probably the most popular person in town. She's, everybody loves her. Everybody loves her. And um, I think everybody is really rooting for her. And next, we've got Leslie Manville from yes. Phantom Thread. Who was married to a former, uh, another nominee, Gary Oldman. I just learned this. <laughs> My new favorite guy. I know. Yeah. That's, a, that's an interesting couple, right? <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. That's like, that's an arty couple. Yeah. Very, very arty. By the way, Phantom Thread uh, really surprised everybody when it, it racked up a whole bunch of nominations. It had not really been much of a presence in the, you know, all the other, you know, awards leading up to the Oscars. And then, you know, multiple nominations tonight. I'm with them. I'm with the people who voted for it because I really love that movie. Um, Laurie Metcalf in Lady Bird, uh, another kind of a front runner in this category. Absolutely. I think if there's anyone who could take it away from Alice and Janney, it would be Laurie Metcalf. 
And then the only one, I believe, in this category who has been nominated for an Oscar before, and that's Octavia Spencer for Shape of Water. Another beloved actress. Oh, I know everybody she's... loves her. <laughs> I know. They do. I love Octavia Spencer. <laughs> she's the nicest. She ties with Viola Davis for the most nominated African-American actress this year with three nominations. But I think that even Octavia Spencer is rooting for Alice and Jenny because they're best friends. Isn't that nice? Yeah. I really like that. It's super nice. Yeah. So who do you think is actually going to win this category? I do think Alice and Jenny is going to get it. I think not only is she going to get it, she's going to get up there, she's going to look amazing, and she's going to give a very good speech. Uh, I, I predict she will give the best speech of the night. I know. I'm excited about Alice and Jenny. I know. I think she's going to win, too. All right. Best Supporting Actress, Alice and Jenny. Mark it down. Supporting Actor. Oof. All right? Yes. We're going to start with Willem Dafoe from... The Florida Project, a little movie that should have done, it should have gotten a lot more love at the Oscars, I think. I'm surprised that it didn't. That movie was amazing. But he is also, he is the standout from that film. He is incredible. Oh, that little girl, though, was also oh, great. I know, friends. I know. She's anyway, I, you know, I'm, ro I'm rooting for Willem on behalf of that movie. I just thought Me it was too. great. Yeah. Um, the next is w for supporting actor Woody Harrelson for Three Billboards. Another beloved character actor. He's so good in that movie. He's one of two people from that movie nominated in this category, the other being Sam Rockwell. Right. And this is, a lot of people don't know, because if you think of Woody Harrelson as, you know, the guy from Cheers and stuff, but this is his third Oscar nomination. That's right. He, he had got one for The Messenger. Yeah. And, and The People versus Larry Flynn. Right. Yeah. He's a great actor. He really is, and he's so good in this movie, he made me cry the most when I watched it. Did he movie. really? Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. I don't want to ruin anything, but yeah, it's a, jer <laughs> it's a tear jerker. Okay, and we love him. His second nomination, um, all you know, a, a strong contender in the supporting actor race, and that's Richard Jenkins for oh. The Shape of Water. I love Richard Jenkins. Everyone loves Richard Jenkins. That's the love thing. Love Richard Jenkins. He's like the Alice and Janney of Richard Jenkins. <laughs> He's, he's the what? You know. He's the Alice and Janney of Richard Jenkins. Okay, one of the most, it, let's just spend a, a little moment on this next nominee in this category, and that is Christopher Plummer. Oh, my gosh. I mean, it's Captain Von Trapp to begin with. First of all, Captain Von Trapp, right, right. <laughs> he, already has the nom he already has the record for being the oldest actor winner, which right. he got from Beginners in right. 2013. When, yeah, when he was 82, I believe. Spring Chicken. And now, at the age of 88, he becomes yes. the oldest acting nominee ever. That's right, taking it away from Gloria Stort from Titanic. Oh, from Titanic. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so this is a very interesting journey for him because Kevin Spacey was supposed to play J. Paul Getty in that movie, All the Money in the World. And then Kevin Spacey became embroiled in a scandal. Yes. They decided to take him out of the movie, reshoot the movie. They put Christopher Plummer in the role. And when I saw the film, I was so shocked to see that he's in the entire film. They basically had to reshoot the entire movie. They really did. And what's amazing is Ridley Scott just acted so quickly. He was like, that's it. I'm taking him out. Got Christopher Plummer on board. And then they spent nine days uh, between London and Rome just getting it all done. I was there for the parts in London. Yeah, what was, that, what was that like? They were all so happy. It was like Ridley they Scott were? Is, eight, is 80 years old. He's the happiest I've ever seen him. I would have thought they would be, because first of all, that's a lot to shoot in nine days. Yeah. Um, it was costing a lot of money. I'm surprised they weren't incredibly tense. I, I was expecting so much tension, and instead it was like Ridley Scott and Christopher Plummer having the time of their lives. Oh, uh, was Christopher Plummer nice? Yeah, of course he was. <laughs> Christopher I love Plummer. Christopher Plummer. All right. Okay. <laughs> The last nominee in this category, Sam Rockwell for Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri. First nomination, beloved, great actor. So nice to see him getting this recognition. I really think that not only does he deserve to win this award, but again, much like Alice and Janney in Supporting Actors, this is someone everybody roots for completely because he's been acting and doing such a good job for such a long time. Also, his next movie, he plays George W. Bush. Yeah. He does, in a movie called Backseat, this Adam McKay movie. And that's where Christian Bale is going to be Dick Cheney. I know. So I'm excited about Backseat, but I'm very excited about Sam Rockwell and Three Billboards Tonight. Who is going to win Best Supporting Actor? I think it's Sam Rockwell all the way. I really do. It does. And I want it to be Sam Rockwell. Seems like his night. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Best Actress? Woo. Uh, I think... Who 
are we thinking? I think it'd be hard to imagine it not being Frances McDormand. I know, because she's won everything. But let's let's run through the, yeah. um, it's a really interesting, uh, it's a really interesting group of nominees. Sally Hawkins for The Shape of Water. She's incredible. She doesn't even speak. No. That's how good she is in this movie. She was incredible. And, and I thought when she got nominated, I thought, oh, wow, she's the first, uh, first actor that's been nominated who you don't hear speak on film. But, of course, I was terribly wrong. You forgot about the piano. I forgot about Holly Hunter and the piano. That's right. I forgot about Patty Duke and the Miracle Worker. And Marley Matlin and, uh, and, and Children of a Lesser God. Children of a Lesser God. And it doesn't, um, all, all of them had, they, you generally don't, I don't want people, you know, tweeting me mean things because you do hear, like, Patty Duke say water. But for the most part, yes. um, there are a few incredible actors in the history of the Academy who've been nominated for roles where they generally don't speak. Um, uh, <laughs> the funny thing that the shape of water was the 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 most the highest rated movie on on Rotten Tomatoes is that right or was that Lady Bird? Lady Bird, I think Lady Bird and Get Out both were like at 199 percent for a while. Okay, but I think they both got bumped by Paddington Two. That is all I know. I just had I just had Paddington Two written down in my notes, so I wanted to get to that. <laughs> Well, that's right. a good movie, but that's Let, 2018. Let's talk about Frances McDormand uh, for three billboards, you know, leading contender for, for best actress. I was saying, like, would you not give her, like, wouldn't you be scared to not give her the award after seeing her in this movie? Because she's I, so mad and so good. I just think she's going to give a banana speech oh, because she's God. just, you know, she's so, she's such an original, quirky artist. Oh my god. She won at the Independent Spirit Awards last night. How was that? She got up on stage was like, I'm going to curse a lot. <laughs> and, she did, and it was great. <laughs> and she did. Yeah. Um, triple crown of acting. She has an Emmy, uh, an Oscar already for Fargo, and uh, Tony That's for right. a play called Good, Good People. People. Yeah. Amazing. Um, we got to get her a Grammy. So they can be an EGOT? So she could be an EGOT. I don't know. I don't know what Frances McDormand would get a Grammy for. Well, she should do an audio book. I would should. listen to Why that. Yeah. Okay, Margot Robbie for I Tanya, another nominee in this category. Your first nomination. She's so good in this movie, and she was really the driving force behind getting it made too. Yeah, yeah. I'm sort of surprised that movie didn't get nominated for. It, that movie was a little bit robbed in the Best Picture category. I kind of think so. I thought for sure it would. But, I think um, Phantom Thread came along and kind of stole its thunder, didn't it? <laughs> I think so. Phantom Thread? Yeah, that's the only one. That's the only option. <laughs> All right. Sir Ronan and Lady Bird. Oh, my God. No. She was so good. Sir Ronan's so good, and she's been doing this for such a long time for such a young person. I know. This is her third Oscar nomination. Remember Atonement? Oh, that was her first thing. Yeah, and then Brooklyn a couple of years ago. Now she's she, incredible. She was a bad seed in Atonement. She was so good, though. <laughs> she was so bad. She was so good. All right. Um, she could be the upset, don't you think? Yeah, I do think that could possibly be the only upset, but I really think Frances McDormand's going to do it. I think Frances McDormand is going to do it, and she's going to beat Meryl Streep. Well, <laughs> I mean, somebody has to eventually. <laughs> somebody has to. Well, lots of people have. That's true. Meryl has three Oscar wins. 21 nominations, 21 right? 21 nominations, but she also, but she's only, she's won three times for Sophie's Choice, Kramer versus Kramer, and The Iron Lady. And Meryl Streep likes to say I'm the most nominated, but I've also lost more than anyone else. <laughs> I guess that's true. Which is kind of great. She's really, really good in the pose. Um, if she does win an Oscar tonight, then she will tie Katherine Hepburn for the most Oscar wins of any actor with four. I feel like even if it's not this year, she will eventually claim that title. Well, yeah, she's not she's not pulling a Daniel Day Lewis and retiring. Better not. She likes it. All right. So your prediction: the Best Actress once again: Sally Hawkins, Frances McDormand, Margot Robbie, Saoirse Ronan, and Meryl Streep. The nominations: the prediction to win. I think it's got to be Frances McDormand. Yeah, it's going to be Frances McDormand. That is like that's the is that the closest thing you think we have to the lock tonight? That and possibly our next category, which is probably best actor, right? I think there's yeah. a lock in that category as well. All right, before we get to before we get to best actor, we are going to toss to Entertainment Weekly's Jared Hall, who has a big interview down on the red carpet. Yes, well, uh, you know, they're, they're not exactly actors, but these two know how to command a stage, or in their case, the ice. Adam Rapon and Mariah Nagasu. Uh, well, first of all, welcome back home. 
Yeah, thank you. We're so glad to be home. Yeah, have you? On are, the red carpet. Yes, on the red carpet. Yes. This is the car this is the red carpet, yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. Now, uh, of course, the obvious question tonight becomes, have you seen I, Tanya, and what are your, your thoughts on the film? How well, could we not be here if we hadn't seen it? I know. We actually, we've just been talking about it. We love the movie, and we're really excited that we hope we meet Margot Robbie and Allison Janney. Yes. Now, if, when you when you watch the skating Margot had to fulfill in that, for someone who had so little time to do what she did, on a scale of 1 to 10, what are we talking here? She did a 10. <laughs> I agree. She, I heard that she put beer in her hair to get that, like, that Tanya Harding hair look and you know I mean whatever it takes. Yeah. I'll put beer in my yeah. hair. <laughs> I wish they had called me. I would have put my blonde wig on and done the triple axel for them, but you know for the sequel I'll be around. Yeah, yeah. I Tanya too. There you go. Yeah. There you go. There there is more to the story I think for yeah. sure. Um now uh, who are you excited besides Margot to see tonight? I have a feeling maybe yours might be something that rhymes with feral deep you know what? If I run into like my old pal Meryl, yeah, long time friends. Yeah, I know. We were, we were just texting right before yeah. I got here. Um, <laughs> uh, I would die probably right away, and that'd be my dead body right on the red carpet. You know, that might I be a first. Yeah, it I would. hope she tells you to respond to your text a little sooner. <laughs> what Maybe. a take it in the Devil Wears Prada. Now, if either of you had a chance to be in, in any of the nominated films this year, what would you what would you want to be in? I Tanya. No, besides that oh, one. Oh God, okay. okay. Um, I think I would say Greatest Showman um, because I really relate to This Is Me, the bearded lady, her music, and Reach for the um, Reach for the Stars, like Zac Efron and Zendaya. Like, <sighs> yeah, that music is so amazing. Do I, do I already sense maybe you're already thinking about a program for the ice, maybe such a one of those songs for the future? Well, you know, we're always looking for music, <laughs> always looking for inspiration, and I mean, like, there's no better where, a better place to get it than here at the Oscars. It's very true. It's very true. By the way, it would have been so embarrassing. I almost wore the same thing tonight. I know. Um, I'm so glad See, I, I went with the velvet. Oh, oh, you're right, yeah. you're right. Oh, sorry, I mean, I almost wore this. And it's lovely as well, beautiful, yeah. yeah. Well, you guys, uh, yeah, well, what, what is the inspiration behind this outfit exactly? Uh, so uh, we met Jeremy Scott a few days ago, and we went to his studio. He's incredible, amazing, and... Um, Super creative guy. Yeah, so creative. I wanted to do something a little different, a little fun, and um, I love it. I love what I'm wearing, and I think uh, we have sort of like a dream and nightmare kind of look going on right now. Like, like fire and ice, like other. soft and hard. Yes. And, yeah, that juxtaposition. Well, you guys, uh, congratulations on, on everything, really, and welcome back home, and I uh, hope you're getting rest, and thank you so much. Have fun tonight. Yeah, thanks, yeah, thanks, thanks, thanks so, so much. much. Take care. Have a good night. And uh, Jess, you're up there. We'll, we'll toss it back to you. Yeah, thanks, Jared. Okay, first of all, every gigantic celebrity here at the Oscars tonight is going to be most excited to see them. They're going to be like the bells of the ball. All right, I'm back. I'm back here with Sara, and um, we're we're gonna run through the best actor category. All right, that's a good race this year. It's a tight one, but I do it's think a tight there's a, a clear front runner. All right, well, let's start with Timothy Chalamet for oh. "Call Me by Your Name." Everybody loves Timothy Chalamet. He won last night at the Independent Spirit Awards. Gave one of the greatest speeches I've ever heard. Really? Yeah. So he'll. If, should he upset tonight, yeah, he will give him. another great, yeah. yeah. And he brings his mom to the award shows, and he's just such a nice guy. And not only was he in Call Me By Your Name, he's also in Lady Bird. He had a big year. I know. Bradley Whitford also. In and Get Out, in The Post, and Lucas Hedges, and Lady Bird, and Every, Three Billboards. Sure, yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to remember. Anyway, everything. everybody's in multiple movies. Yeah. Um, but Timothy Chalamet is the only one to get a nomination. That's true. Of all these. All right, the other no another nominee in this category, Daniel Day-Lewis. Best actor ever. Was won three times for My Left Foot, There Will Be Blood, and Lincoln. This is his sixth nomination. Do, do you think he has a chance tonight? I mean, I'm sort of shocked that he's not the front runner of this race, because it's Daniel Day-Lewis, and he is incredible in this movie. I think the movie was, though, kind of controversial like like it, it, it was not a universally beloved movie it was a very deliberate um art film it was absolutely beautiful but but you know not exactly a crowd pleaser i know but 
I'm shocked by how many people don't find it hilarious because it's actually a very funny well, movie. Well, you have a weird sense of humor because that movie was not funny. <laughs> it was so <laughs> Not funny! <laughs> okay, I was going to say a joke, but I'm not going to say it. Oh, All right. Um, by the way, I, a little bit of trivia. So Daniel Day-Lewis's character's name yes. in, in, uh, in Phantom Thread is Reynolds Woodcock. That's right. And when I first saw that his name was Reynolds Woodcock, I thought, Jess, get your mind out of the gutter. That is like, that. that's, but in fact, my You're mind right wasn't there. in the gutter. That Paul Thomas Anderson and Daniel Day-Lewis came up with that name and it was a dirty joke. Yeah, they did because the, I think the two of them have stayed really close friends since there will be blood and they were going back and forth and uh, I appreciate, see, it is a hilarious movie. <laughs> now don't you see it? Reynolds Woodcock. All right. I'm not going to Reynolds Woodcock, but I am going to Jared Hall, who's down on the carpet right now with another interview. Yes, sir. I have the folks from the uh, Oscar nominated film Last Men in Aleppo. And, and uh, first of all, I, I do have to say we're, we're very excited to see you here because uh, your, your travel visa came through kind of last minute, correct? Yes. At the last minute, we get the visa because uh, there's a ban for the Syrian to come here. Right. Yeah. So, so that that process for you, I, I, I mean, you must be thrilled, of course, that that uh, the, the powers that be uh, made that happen. But, but for you, what does it what does it mean just to be able to be here tonight? Uh, until the last minute, I was losing the hope to be here. Mm. But then, when they told us that uh, your issue uh, has been done. Uh, I'm very excited. Yeah, too. yeah. Now, guys, this film ha has so many people talking just because of the content. Of course, it's it's still relevant. This is still a very pertinent issue uh, with everything happening in, in in Syria. So, tell me the just the how difficult was it actually to make this film? It was very difficult, but not not just for us, like as a maker for this film. This is evidence for the uh, for the crime in in Syria. Evidence of the Russians. Uh, policy evidence of the, the closing the eyes of over this country and the, the, the war kept going and we tried to show the, the resistance of this is uh, volunteer who try like to taking the life from them their destruction it's about their life about their their risking in their life to make to make a change and it's one of the beautiful example for the power of the humanity facing the war machines now, I do want to uh, ask you something maybe a little more lighthearted here because, of course, it is the Oscars and it is a night to celebrate with uh, your fellow filmmakers and, and storytelling. Who are you excited to see tonight? Who do you want to be able to have a conversation with? Oh, uh, Firas. I would like to have a conversation with Firas. <laughs> and uh, maybe Paul Thomas Anderson. I admire his films a lot. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe George Clooney. Oh, yes. We'll see if he's here. Yeah. Indeed. And well, maybe his, uh, his wife, uh, Amal Cloney. Because so much for humanitarian. Yeah. Of course, this is the reason. Sometimes, when the, any actor or any any voice in this industry have the values of the humanity, it's bigger than just to be artist. Yeah. Yeah. Well, congratulations, and I'm so glad you were able to make it, gentlemen. Have a great night, and uh, JD and Lola, we'll toss it over to you. Well, thanks so much. We are standing here. I wanted, there's an old Hollywood anecdote, which is to know your light. You should always know your light. Our light is intense and is boring down on us <laughs> from the upper right-hand corner. It's the sun. They say it never rains in Southern California, but in fact, it has been rainy and cold, and now it is... We're baking a little bit, aren't we, Lola? We are, but you know what? We're red hot, and I'm so happy that the sun is here because, like you said before, it's been cloudy, it's been rainy, but... The gods shined upon us and brought us the sun for the Oscars. You know, we were talking about veterans earlier in the show, though. We mentioned Meryl Streep, Christopher Plummer, but I want to talk about the next generation, the youngins that are coming up that are really just owning this moment. Timothy Chalamet had a huge night yesterday at the Independent Spirit Awards. He's been fantastic on the red carpet, really grateful, and he's one of the ones that will be that will be watching for decades to come. What are your thoughts about the young generation coming up, Jay? Well, it's a really interesting moment, as you say, Lola, because we've got the sort of the veterans who, who look like the front runners in these categories, Gary Oldman, Francis McDormand, right. people who are beloved by the Academy, people who probably will win and then we have this generation of people right in behind them who've also gotten nominations Chalamet, yeah. Saoirse Ronan, uh, Greta Gerwig these are people who Daniel are going Kaluuya. to Daniel Kaluuya yes. you know so we're seeing this sort of changeover maybe from the Daniel Day-Lewis's of the world to the Daniel Kaluuya's of the world so that's <laughs> exciting 
Daniel. I say that Daniel. <laughs> anyway, so we're excited to see what happens with those guys and what uh, happens with uh, all these award categories. It's going to be interesting to see because these are names we're going to hear for for generations to come. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, let's let's get back to Jess. Jess, what's going on up there? Well, you know, we're hanging out here with uh, the people VIP viewers. We're giving everybody sort of a bird's eye view from the bleachers to the red carpet. And I'm here with Entertainment Weekly, Sarl Vakormerson, and we're running through the categories telling you how to fill out your Oscar ballot at your viewing party to tell you who's going to win. So we were, um, we were talking about best actor, right? A really good race. We talked about Timothy Chalamet, Daniel Day-Lewis, nominated for what is probably his final film. Unless he's the share of great actors, as I like to say. Um, we also have in this category Daniel Kaluuya for, oh. for Get Out. He is so good in this movie, and he's having a huge year. He's currently in Black Panther, too. Yeah, and he's he, the Get Out is such a tremendous success story, a movie that was, first of all, directed by an African-American director uh, who is the only the fifth nominated African-American director in history. And it's his feature, it's his first film. He would be the first to win, and that's Jordan Peele. All right, and we'll, mate, we'll, get, back to, we'll get back to Daniel Kaluuya in a minute. We're going to go to Jared for another interview. Yes, sir. I am uh, down here on the red carpet with the one and only Mr. Danny Glover, who is a nominee tonight. Sir, thank you so much uh, for stopping by. It is a pleasure. Thank you very much. You know, I'm glad to be here, to, especially with my wonderful director, Yancey Ford. He's directed this extraordinary documentary and, and my producing partner in Johnson & Bond, who produced it. So, so that's the exciting thing about it. And we should say the film is Strong Island. Strong Island. Yes. So for folks who have not gotten a, a, a chance to see it, tell folks what it's about. I'm going to let you talk. So <laughs> Strong Island essentially tells the story of my brother who was shot and killed 25 years ago by someone who claimed to have done so in self-defense. Mm. That person was never indicted by a grand jury, and so he did not stand trial. The film takes a look at two things, the way race influenced the investigation and the way that my brother's death impacted my family. It really is you know, sort of a case in, uh, of like the, the past being prologue because everything that happened in my brother's case in 1992 is essentially a script for all of the self-defense cases that we've been seeing since Trayvon Martin. Yeah. Well, and of course, topics like this are so uh, important right now. They're, they're, they're in the zeitgeist for a reason because uh, so, many, so many things are going on. So for, for you guys, for the Academy to be recognizing this tonight, what's it mean to you? Well, uh, certainly the, the, the Academy has a role is an important role in terms of the designs and covers the cultural activity in this country primarily. So the Academy has a role to say not about everything, whether it's transgender, whether it's about, uh, about those who are left out. It talks about community. It talks about anything. We're being, di we're being citizens tonight, you know. We've, we've had the opportunity, Lou your film, to be a part of this, this process. It's an eight-year journey for Yancey. But we've been on the last four years, and you can't imagine the kind of breath and, and everything that's been brought to this, the imagination of other artists, not simply here, but but our, our cinematographer or our editor, all of them have played a more an important role in bringing this to this realization. Yeah, a lot of people uh, it takes to, to tell these stories. So congratulations to all of you on it and for being here. Take Good care. luck tonight. Right, Thank you so much. Take all care. Right. Thanks so much. And uh, Jess, I believe we're going back to you, yes? Yeah, thank you, Jared. Um, here again, Sarva Comerson, we're breaking down uh, the, uh, the different races, who's gonna win. We were talking about best actor. So, Timothy Chalamet, first nomination. Daniel Day-Lewis, his final movie and his sixth Oscar nomination. Daniel Kaluuya, nominated for Get Out, one of the great success stories of this year's Oscars, made for $4.6 million, has made $255 million worldwide. Amazing. And uh, the director of that, of course, Jordan Peele, only the fifth African-American director nominated in that category in the 90-year history. So I am really rooting for everything, everything having to do with Get Out. Um, Gary Oldman for Darkest Hour. I mean, it's Gary Oldman. I am shocked that Gary Oldman has never won an Oscar. Did you know that? No, he's been nominated twice. Yeah, or one, at least one other time for Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy. Oh, well, yeah, which was also a, won the Oscar for most boring movie of that year. <laughs> I, I know, I know. I with you about this I know. At the time. All right, we're going to yes. go back to Jared for an interview. We're live in Tokyo. Yeah. 
Yes, sir. I have uh, some of the Oscar-nominated visual effects artists from War for the Planet of the Apes, Joe and Dan. Uh, well, first of all, congratulations, and what an exciting night for you guys. A lot of people have the two of you pegged to take this one. Thank you, Jared. Uh, we, we hope those people are right, but boy, you never know. There's a lot of good work this year. Yeah, yeah, it's very competitive and some really fantastic work. So fingers crossed, but uh, it's great just to be at the party. Now, you say a lot of fantastic work. Let's let's uh, hypothesize for a second. Of any of the other films, what is what, what is one that you wish you could have gotten your fingers on and, and, and got to play around with? Oh, that's a good question. I mean, they've all been really great. I mean, uh, they did a fantastic job with uh, Blade Runner. We did help out a little bit on Galaxy, so that was nice to uh, to be a part of that one. Uh, Doug Kirk was beautiful. I mean, look, you really can't complain. Yeah. 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 And I think, um, you know, Star Wars, we grew up on those movies. We grew and up on Star Wars. Like, Star Wars is always just Star Wars, yeah. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. That's a, You can't go wrong with yeah. that answer. It's incredible yeah. stuff they do, and fantastic things you guys do as well. Uh, good luck tonight. All right. Thank Congratulations. Thank you, Thank you so much. Pleasure. Jay J.D. and Lola, over to you. Hi there, everybody. Hi there. We're talking Hi. about how this award season is different than any other that we've ever been in. Yeah, J.D., I think it's shaping up to be one of the most political in Academy Award history. We've got the Time's Up movement. We have people protesting against gun violence. So, so there are a lot of deep conversations that are going to be happening on that stage and on that red carpet. And I expect a number of speeches to address fundamental issues of the day that people are grappling with. You're totally right. You know, the Oscars always get political. And this year, we're going to look and see people wearing orange for every town uh, for gun safety. Mm -hmm. We're going to see people with the Me Too movement fins. Yeah, and a lot of people really thinking about how they want to address those on stage. And we will see some moment, I know, during the show, uh, when people address some of the issues that were grappled with this year. Annabella Sciorra, Ashley Judd, and Selma Hayek will be presenting together as a very powerful statement about how Hollywood has come through this sort of amazing time of controversy around the issues of sexual violence, sexual assault, and sexual harassment. And uh, that'll be interesting. Annabella Sciorra so visibly moved during rehearsals that she choked up when she, uh, when she got up on stage. So Jess, I think you're gonna see a very interesting show, a show people are gonna be talking about on social media all through the night. Oh, hi. <laughs> I think, yeah, I didn't know I was on because I'm a professional. <laughs> We were talking about what to do next. Okay, so we're going through the best actor category, and we've got Timothy Chalamet, Daniel Day-Lewis, Daniel Kaluuya, Gary Oldman in Darkest Hour, nominated for the world's most boring movie. Stop. No, 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 no. Not nominated <laughs> Darkest Hour, not the most, but Tinker Taylor told your spy. I disagree on Another. this one. I love that movie. All right, movie. what is your prediction for the best actor category? Also, Denzel Washington is in it. Who's your prediction? I think it's got to be Gary Oldman. He, ever since the movie premiered at Telluride, he's been just winning accolades after accolades after accolades. All right, well, I think that we are, um, we are now going to be tossing to Jared for another interview. Sure. Yes, sir. Uh, you guys, one of my favorite actors here with me, Michael Stuhlbarg, who is in not one, not two, but three of the Best Picture nominees this year. Uh, we've got The Post, Call Me By Your Name, and The Shape of Water. Did I miss anything? Nope. Okay, got them all. Great. All right, so we're off to a good start here. Uh, I mean, is it is it an, an embarrassment of riches? How do you even describe what has That's gone on this year? beautiful phrase. Yes. An absolute embarrassment of riches. Um, you know, they all sought out my participation in these films, and it doesn't get any better than that. I'm so, you know, grateful, and I feel blessed to have been a part of them. I loved what I got to do, and the stories, all of them had a, a, a great sense of um, immediacy, and uh, at the heart of them, uh, love, which is, you know, you can't tell better stories than about what love does to us. Yes, I would, uh, I would agree with that wholeheartedly. Uh, so much has been made and said of, of your speech in Call Me By Your Name and, and the, the delivery, the writing. Tell me about in that moment. I mean, was, it, was it a lot of takes? I feel like it's something you maybe wouldn't have wanted to do too many times. Well, um, for some reason we shot the film in chronological order. So I really had a couple of months of time to get to know Timothy and to uh, know the material and get to know Army and to watch them bloom and grow and take risks in the material that they were given. 
And it really, by the time it, it came for me to do that, all of that information, all of that time informed what it was that I had to do. We only did two takes of it from two different angles and we were pretty much done. I think we all kind of knew what we wanted to do. Yeah. Now in terms of uh, The Shape of Water, just such a, a fantastical journey that audiences get to go on with this film. And, and uh, to me, that, that, that kind of notion of we shouldn't judge people until we get to know them just because someone's not the same as us. Mm. Uh, tell me about when, when Guillermo del Toro was taking you through, here's, here's what the story is going to be. Uh, you are a, a, a scientist, correct, who then takes a, a protective stance uh, with this this with this fish man for you what was the like what intrigued you so much about the you know that made you want to do this I just thought I mean initially Guillermo was interested in working together so he invited me out he didn't really tell me much about the story he handed me the script he said read it and we'll talk about it afterwards um, we read it uh, I read it um, uh, after we had had a wonderful combination about some many things that we have in common. He's a, he's a creator of art. I love to draw and paint as well, so we had that in common. I was, I was honored that he thought of me and I jumped at the opportunity. I was really particularly taken with the combination of elements that the script provided, whether it was the magical realism of the creature or the kind of historical Cold War intrigue, the love story at the center of it, and the humor that, that it involves plus the all the homages to to Hollywood musicals as well it was a real combination of things and I was so pleased to be thought on yeah, yeah. Uh, lastly I, I've got to ask you of course we've already established you're in three of this year's best picture nominees of the other six if you could be in one of them which would it be oh gosh um, they were all remarkable I would have been glad to have been in any of them um, I've worked with Martin McDonough a couple of times mm -hmm. before. Fantastic guy. So I guess because we're, we're, we're friends, uh, any opportunity I would have to work with Martin would be a, a highlight in my life. I could even see you being Lady Bird's dad. I'm absolutely. Sure. Hey, absolutely. Yeah. But Tracy Let's Kill that as he well. Did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, congratulations on, on all the success and have a wonderful night. I think you may somehow come out a winner. We'll see. Yeah, <laughs> have a great night. Thank you so much. All right, Jess, back to you. All right, thank you, Jared. I'm back here in the bleachers, and I am here with one of people's VIP fans, Sandy Gallet. Hey, Sandy, hey. Where, where are you from? St. Louis, Missouri. Oh, wow, so you came a long way. Came a long way. How did you get here? Did they, did they come and kidnap you and force you to go to the Oscars? No, I entered, <laughs> I entered just like everybody else. It only takes one, and they picked me, and oh, it's great. Oh, that's so great. Congratulations. What, what, all, what else have you been doing here today? Um, a lot of this. Yeah. A lot of a lot of sitting lot around of and waiting. Sitting. Yeah. Um, no, but it's been great. We <laughs> we had lunch. They fed us really well. Oh, that's good. And uh, took pictures and met lots of neat people. <laughs> okay, who are you really really excited to get a look at tonight on the red carpet? Um, Meryl Streep. I mean, to see her in person would just be amazing. And my boyfriend George Clooney. You know, I'd love to see him. <laughs> um, Sandra Bullock. It'd yeah. be great to see them. Uh, anybody, it's it's wonderful. I have an Oscar party every year, so to be here in person. Oh is wow, that's good. Blowing my mind. I think what you'll discover is watching it in your pajamas at home is the best way to watch oh, the yes. Oscars. Yes. <laughs> Someday I look forward to doing that again. Yes. Um, what was your favorite movie this year? Um, Get Out. Was it? Yeah, I really loved it. Is that what you're rooting for tonight? Yes, and three billboards. We love that as well, being a Missouri connection. So, and I love Francis McDormand, and uh, so I hope everybody has a great time. I'm gonna give you one word of warning. Yes. Movie stars are so much shorter in person. Well, I'm only five one, so I'll fit in. Oh, so they'll all <laughs> taller than you. By the way, same here. Yay! Let's hear it for <laughs> the short people. Yes. All right, this is Red Carpet Live, brought to you by Farmers Insurance. I come from a long line of farmers, Sandy. Maybe like you. Yes. No. And uh, no. Well, I do. <laughs> anyway, so happy to have. Have Farmers Insurance sponsoring, and I'm going to go now to Jared, who's got somebody else to talk to. Thank you. Yes, I have a couple nominees from one of tonight's five uh, nominated songs for Best Original Song, Rafael Sadiq and Tara Sinson. Thank you so much uh, for stopping by here. Uh, first of all, I've got to ask, you guys are, you're used to performing, which you are doing tonight, but you're also nominees, of course, which makes you more nervous? 
Well, we're not performing tonight. Mary, oh, you're not going to be up there. Mary J is Mary, performing. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. And we're watching. You're going to watch. Yeah. So okay. we're not going to be nervous. Okay. Yeah, not nervous about that. <laughs> but nervous for her? Nervous for her, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, nervous yeah. for her. Well, when it when it came to uh, time to, to collaborate and write this song, of course, she had already been so much part of the process uh, with this character. Tell me about the, the collaboration. What, what each of you kind of brought to the puzzle to make it complete? Um, Mary had such a strong t retelling of the story, and of course the, the, to the story is so powerful. Even when you hear it, it's like, oh my God. So immediately we were just able to just jump into it, and of course Raphael and I have written together for many years, so it's almost like riding a bike. We can just jump in and then you're like, come on, like double the Dutch, adding another person in. And it was just incredible, powerful. The message was clear that um, there's a line in our song that says, love is, an an love is the answer and hate is the cancer. And that was just the premise in which we started. Yeah, uh, of course, uh, we were just talking right before we came live. This is the first time here for both of you. You're taking it all in, of course. Who are you excited to see tonight? I'm excited to see Mary J. Blige. Yeah. Um, who else? Uh, probably the Get Out cast. Yeah, yeah. For sure. Um, who else? Oh. I, know, I have so many people in my I know, head right? before I, uh, you asked that question, yeah. and then it's, I just, it just went totally blank. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> Do you have anyone in mind you're uh, looking out for? Um, in? Well, I'm especially excited to see the Mary Jacob performance. I actually performed in a choir three years ago when John Legend and Common won, so I'm in a totally different position yeah. now. So I'm um, excited to see the Get Out cast. Um, and, and just everyone, especially women, it's like it's a, such a powerful year for us. So everybody um, and uh, that are wearing black and in support of still, that's what I'm doing. And just everyone in support of Me Too and Time Is Up and just here, powerful time to be here right now. Indeed, have a fantastic Thank night. Congratulations. Thank, Thank you. you so much. JD and Lola, back to you guys. Well, Hi you can guys. see the carpet is really heating up. You know, the, the big, big stars tend to come towards the later end of the afternoon. So you're hearing these big roars. That was Gal Gus Garcia Bernal that you just heard behind us. People are really excited to see them. And we were just talking here about the diverse mix of films that are in this year's Oscars. It's really, it runs the gamut, doesn't it, Lola? Sure, you've got the big blockbusters like Dunkirk, but you also have smaller out, art house films that have managed to really break through. If you think about Get Out, it was only made for $4.6 million and it's already grossed $200 million at the box office. And I'm getting a and, cut of that. And you're getting a cut of that. No, I'm not getting any of it. But Lady Bird, Get Out, these smaller, quiet films have really resonated with audiences and found blockbuster acclaim as well as critical acclaim. So big up to the small films. And I've learned not to eat mushrooms from one of those movies. I'm not going to tell you which one but it's Phantom Thread, I did tell you. You know what's so interesting? You bring up food, because food has played a really prominent position in a lot of films this year. Eggs were huge in Shape of Water, as were frittatas and Phantom Thread, and we know what happened with that peach and Call Me By Your Name. We don't want to talk about that, but it was very juicy. were done with food that were not what we should do with food. It was a cautionary tale about peaches. Apricots, rather, too. Right. But no, people had a lot of fun with food, and we're having a lot of fun here. But I want to I want to know what's happening with Jess up there. Jess, what's going on up there? All right, we're looking at, we're talking about who is going to win. So we've been running through all of the categories talking about our predictions. Let's, uh, let's recap. Supporting actress. Uh, I think it's going to be Allison Janney. Yes. Supporting actor. Sam Rockwell. Uh, best Actress. Francis McDormand. Best Actor. Gary Oldman. All right. Now we are at Original Screenplay, all right? Let's run through it. Uh, Lady Bird, written oh. by Ger Greta Gerwig, based on her own life. The Big Sick, Emily Gordon and Kamal and Johnny, a real-life couple based loosely on their life. Yeah. That is an amazing screenplay, and I'm so glad that they got the nomination. Yeah, it was good. I, it was That was one of those movies that had it ended up with the Best Picture nomination, even you wouldn't have been surprised. I, was, I thought for sure that they would yeah, be, actually. Yeah, rooting for that one. Uh, Jordan Peele for Get Out. He just won the same award last night at the Independent Spirit yeah. Awards and also at the Writers Guild Awards. Only the fourth... Only the fourth African-American ever nominated in the original screenplay category, and he would be the first to win. Martin McDonough for three billboards, and also Guillermo del Toro and Vanessa 
Guillermo del Toro and Vanessa Taylor for The Shape of Water. Who do you think is going to win this category? It's funny, this category sort of reflects how tight the best picture race is, but I think it's going to be Get Out. I think Yeah, think Jordan Peele yeah. could become first African-American writer to ever win in the original screenplay. I am now going to toss to Jared Hall from Entertainment Weekly with somebody down to talk to on the red carpet. Yes, sir. We are talking ninth Oscar nomination right here, Diane Warren. It is a pleasure. Congratulations and welcome back to the big show. Here I am. Yeah. Third time in four years. But this doesn't, I mean, this surely doesn't get old, right? No, I look at this. Come on, how cool is this? I'm here, like, I'm at, I'm at the Oscars with a song I wrote. And it's, well, and it's a song that I'm really proud of. Yes, know? as you should be. Tell me yeah. a bit about that. Like, is it any kind of a different process this time around than previous I mean, efforts? It's, just, it, it's the same process. You try to write a great song, but you never know what the song's going to do. And this song is taking on an amazing life of its own. It's being, you know, adopted by so many great organizations and really resonating with a lot. I mean, people are standing up now, so it's becoming the anthem for that. Yeah. How cool is that? And if, I'm, I'm sure going to be a fantastic performance tonight. The Comment. Performance. Wait till you guys see that. Oh. For real, it's gonna be mind blowing. I'm here. See, I'm, I'm sensing something good coming on tonight. Something do you, great. Do you recall your first trip down this red carpet? 30 years ago at the 60th Oscars. Nothing's gonna stop us now. Yeah. Wow. I've been around a long time. <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations on Thank this one, and best of luck tonight. I'm Thank you so yet. much. Well, so, look. Anything? It can happen anytime. You never know. You Thank look you. fantastic. Have a great night. Thank you so much. Guys, it is it is uh, it, so many people down here, and we have so many more categories to cover. I'm going to toss it back up to Jess. All right, Jared. Here with Sara Vilkomerson from Entertainment Weekly, and we are breaking down who is going to win. All right. Original screenplay we just talked about, and that's going to be Jordan Peele for Get Out. I think so. It could be Martin McDonough for Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri, but I think it's going to be Get Out. I, yeah, and that's going to be historic. First African-American to win in the original screenplay category. Now, adapted screenplay. This is James Ivory for Call Me By Your Name. James Ivory's obviously directed a lot before. Yes. But uh, this is his, I believe, first nomination for screenplay. Well, I think he was nominated for Howard's End and Remains of the Day. Um, so what I meant to say was this is his third nomination for screenplay. <laughs> he's never won. He's never won, he's, though. He's never, uh, but he's never, he's never won for directing. It would be his first win. Uh, this would be definitely his first one for for screenplay solo because he, you know, him and Merchant Ivory are that whole long couple. But also, he is, I believe, along with uh, Agnes Varda. They're both 89. I think he's eight days younger or something right. like that than she is. All right. Then uh, the Disaster Artist nominated for Adapted Screenplay. Um, Logan? It's the first super, it's the first live action superhero movie ever to be nominated in Screenplay. In that, he's made $616 million worldwide. It's not that much, is it? So <laughs> they already won. Yeah. Anyway, Logan, that's, that's an interesting nomination here. Molly's Game by writer-director Aaron Sorkin. Yeah, this is when he made his directorial debut, and it's uh, it's based upon her memoir itself. Um, and then Mudbound, we talked about, that's by Virgil Williams and Dee Reese, nominated for Adapted Screenplay. Dee Reese, first African-American woman ever nominated in this category. Isn't that insane? Yeah, incredible. But I mean, I'm really rooting for her, but I do think that if you're filling out your ballot, you probably want to go with James Ivory. All right, and we, uh, so we have James Ivory for Call Me By Your Name. You're predicting that. I really think so. I think it's his time. All right, we're gonna go back. We're gonna go back to JD and Lola now. Hi guys, how are you doing? So fresh from the slopes, we have Lindsay Vaughn with us. Lindsay, how are you feeling tonight? <laughs> uh, pretty stressed out, pretty stressed out, high anxiety, but um, yeah, I made it down the red carpet so far without uh, tripping. So, and my outfit's still together, so I'm happy. <laughs> What's more nerve wracking, appearing at the Olympics or appearing at the Oscars? Definitely here. Um, I just, I'm, it's, it's a lot, you know, I'm out of my comfort zone and um, it's, you know, the Oscars is such a big deal. I'm just trying to soak it all in and not mess it up. <laughs> so you go down mountainsides at like a gazillion miles an hour and this is more nerve wracking. <laughs> yeah, going fast is easy. That's the easy part. This is like, you know, anything could happen. Like, what if my dress rips and, you know, my butt falls out? You know, you never know what's going to happen. 
Well, that, well, that would be exciting. That would be exciting. I mean, maybe for you, not for me. <laughs> that would be a great rating straw for us. <laughs> so, you know, yeah, that you know really bad. Lindsay, you are definitely the poster child for female strength. What's it feel like for you to be here during this time of Time's Up and seeing all these women throughout Hollywood stand up and say that they want equality in this industry and they're willing to fight for it? It's something that you've always done in sports. Yeah. What's it feel like to see your sisters in Hollywood do the same thing? It's amazing. You know, it's an amazing time, I think, to be a woman and to stand up for ourselves. And I met uh, Ashley Judd, actually, the other, the other night. And... You know, I just think that the strength that they've shown in coming out and, and everyone kind of coming together and supporting each other is amazing. So I hope that we can and they can change culture and change the way we view women in the workplace and in sports and in life um, and make it more of an equal playing field for everyone. Thank you so much for being here. We're going to let you go inside. Bye. Have a party. Have fun tonight. Guys, bye. The most decorated skier, American skier of all time, Jess, that was Lindsey Vaughn. Everybody is going to be so excited. Everybody's going to be so excited to see Lindsey Vaughn and Adam Rapon here on the red carpet tonight. They are, seriously, they're so excited, these movie stars, right now to meet them. I'm here with Sarah Wilkomerson from Entertainment Weekly, and we're breaking down who's going to win. Talking about the director category now, that's a good category this year. It is. It's a tight category. It's a too. tight category. Interesting that Christopher Nolan, who's nominated for Dunkirk, this is his first directing nomination. Don't you think that's sort of crazy? Yeah, it is kind of crazy. But he does, you know, big, gigantic blockbuster movies, and sometimes those weirdly do get overlooked at the Oscars. It's true. But Dunkirk is such an achievement. It was such a masterfully directed movie. Paul Thomas and Anderson for Phantom Thread, another nominee. He's been nominated, I think, eight times before? His eighth nomination and has never won. That's crazy. Greta Gerwig for Lady Bird. I really, First nomination. I know, but only the fifth woman ever to be nominated, which is sort of also, it's been 90 years, and she's only number five. So that's exciting, too. Yeah, the only woman, as you were saying, is Catherine, Catherine Bigelow, Bigelow, who has won before. And Hurt Locker and Lady Bird are not at all similar. <laughs> Hurt Locker and Lady Bird, not, not the least all. bit similar. No, not really. If you find a similarity in those movies, I would like to know. Female director. Not seeing it. <laughs> Jordan Peele. For Get Out, not like only the fifth African American ever uh, ever nominated for uh, in the in the in the directing category. Isn't it nice you can see the, how the new membership of the Academy is actually being reflected in the nominations this year? Yeah, they actually have made a huge effort in the past couple of years to make the membership of the Academy, which is about 6,000 people, to make it younger yes. and um, also to diversify it. Thank goodness. And, but it's great to see people like Jordan Peele and Greta Gerwig as a yeah. direct result. And I, and I, I don't think that's going to stop. I mean, I some not. years will be richer than others, but I think we really have seen the tide turn a little bit with right. the Academy. It's good. Um, Guillermo de Toro nominated for Shape of Water. Yeah, I think I think that he's got the edge on this one a little bit. I mean, people love Shape of Water. People are crazy about this. People movie. love it. It also has 13 nominations, more than any other film. Yes, and I think they're really rooting for him too. Like they feel like it's his time to actually. Um, speaking of speaking of people that people love, Alice and Janney just walked in, so every everybody's screaming. <laughs> All right, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask the control room right now. Are we gonna go on to best picture, or do you want me to do something else? Oh no, we're gonna to we're gonna toss to Jared. Hello, uh, hi guys. I have uh, Mr. James Ivory here, a nominee tonight for uh, your screenplay for Call Me by Your Name, yes. which, right. by the way. First of all, congratulations, but also just a, a masterful job you did in, in translating that story from book to screen. It, is, it, is it ever a difficult process for you in your writing? Uh, well, this is the first time I've ever written a, a screenplay uh, from start to finish. From, right. And um, it, it was, it, well, it was hard in a way. Sure, it's hard. Finding, uh, you have a whole novel there. You have to extract from it what you want, and then you have to add things that aren't there or that you think would help it to tell the story. Uh, it's, it's hard, it's easy, it's fun. I mean, like any piece of work. So now, let's talk about this for a second. You are the oldest man ever nominated for an Oscar. I gather. You gather. <laughs> I was going to say, I, I would assume you probably knew that, but, but tonight you may also very well be a winner. So 
For someone of your, your stature, your experience, for this film, what's it all mean to you? Well, I mean, it's, it, it, it's certainly unexpected, and uh, but um, highly gratifying, enjoyable, mm -hmm. obviously. I mean, to be, you know, still be active after such uh, a long, long, long career. I mean, I, I started out working in, in 1953, so. Yeah. Do you recall your first trip down this red carpet, what that was like? Um, it was less, there was less of it. <laughs> not not, it not was, quite like this? It, it wasn't like this, really. That was back in, that would have been in 87, something like that. Some 30 years ago or so. Yeah, uh, no. with a view. Yeah. Well, uh, congratulations on the film. Just an extraordinary job, and good luck tonight. Thank I think I think we might hear your name called. Fingers nice. crossed. <laughs> Thank you so much. Have a good night. Jess, going to toss it up to you. All right, back here with Andrea Laventhal, People's Style and Beauty Director. What kind of statements have people been making on, on red carpets throughout the season? Because it, it, it has been such a different, exciting time where we've really reevaluated what it means to dress for the red carpet and reevaluated how we talk about the red carpets. Absolutely. So it started with the Golden Globes, of course, when most of the actresses and actors who attended were all black in a show of solidarity for the Time's Up movement. That has never been done. To see everybody wear one color and to choose black was such a powerful moment and got everybody talking, well, what's going to happen the rest of the season? And I think what we saw, people then started to have a little more fun, go glam, but they were still making these statements. We saw a lot of emeralds, and that wasn't just a trend. There was actually a reason. What was the reason for that? So interesting. Green was the color of the suffragettes movement way back when. So that was sort of a nod to it. There were actresses like Emma Stone. She did her makeup for the Globes to represent all the colors of the suffragettes. So there were these little subtle nods to activism that still were appropriate for a red carpet, but very powerful as well. All right, Andrea, I am going to toss it over to Jared, if Jared is ready, to talk about one of the great underrated films of the season, and that is The Greatest Showman, a movie that a movie that audiences loved, mm -hmm. critics were a little divided on, but ultimately came this huge hit. Yeah, isn't that phenomenal, the way this film has caught on? It, uh, it was a very slow start, and now even at, uh, here at, at Entertainment Weekly, we have this theory, this is, this is the movie that's gonna have those kind of titanic legs, that it just keeps growing and growing. We've seen the soundtrack do phenomenal things. It is, uh, the, the guys who wrote it, Vince Prasic and Justin Paul, uh, who've written much of the music, they, uh, the sales have even surpassed their Oscar-winning music from last year's La La Land. So uh, the, the music, I think, has really helped give Give this film a boost. Uh, we are going to see a performance uh, of This Is Me tonight, which I have heard may not actually be performed uh, by Kiela, uh, Kiela Settle because she apparently is a little ill, a little under the weather. It's going to be a last minute decision. We will see what happens there, but they do have someone on standby uh, to be able to take over for her. So we will see what happens there. But yeah, The, the Greatest Showman, it's, it's almost uh, the, the little movie that could, and I think uh, it's not going to go around, uh, go away for a while we shall see all right uh jd and lola who you got over there martin come back hi guys on, we're, guys. we're just back. waiting happy come back, come back. we have the back, we have guys. the team from three billboards hi gang how are you yes, yes, come yes. in here abby you looking so good if you could put anything on a billboard this oscar season what would you put on um less hate more dancing <laughs> love everybody yeah. that's would be my three i'll billboards. second that that's perfect you mentioned dancing, so yeah. you got to show us your signature dance oh, move. I, if you I, guys I, win tonight, what are you going to break out? Party, I can't really show that, but I can give like a little, it's like a little, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like a, but that's it right now, you know what I mean? <laughs> a little rocking back and forth. Abby, yeah. show us your and moves. What do you got? Which one? I don't know. I feel like I'd go for a little shoulder. shoulder, shoulder. A little, shoulder. You know, that's just the beginning. That's just the opening move. Yeah. Now, you're one of many mothers of the year. You're one of the, this, this film season was filled with complicated mothers. Well, I'm the mother, crusty mother of the ball. <laughs> I, I love playing these characters. I mean, obviously, I don't have these wrinkles for anything. I'm, I'm using them. And in the end, he turned out to be a good boy. Yeah, I was very... Uh, I, I, I gave him some good advice, don't you think? 
You, know, you stand on the couch most of the time. <laughs> With my turtle. <laughs> <laughs> now, you Abby, know, you're I, Australian. I, I wanted to ask you, what is it like to make such an American movie? And you are also become sort of a master of American accents. In this movie, you didn't have to have an American accent, which is interesting. Yeah, was yeah. that a choice on your part? or It was actually Martin's choice. And I, had, I, I went in thinking I was going to be you know, studying an Ebbing, Missouri accent. And Martin was really adamant about keeping her Australian. I, I do like what it does geographically for the story. You know, it kind of like, you're like, oh, this could be anywhere in the world. That we're, we're all in this together kind of vibe. You know, all the movies that were out this year, besides your own, what movie would you want to be in? Well, well, that's a hard one, isn't it? I mean, I, I do really love Call Me by Your Name. I'm just not sure where the part for me is in there. Well, that that's a good question. If you could have, if you could have, exactly. uh, if you could have been in any other film this year, what would it have been other than Three Billboards? I know that's a tough question. So, the Phantom Thread. I don't know why, but it just seems like me and the Phantom Thread would just be incredibly different. And I know why, because you've got some killer threads on tonight. We've got to talk about this tuxedo jacket. Yeah. I love a man who can wear a color. This is a bold choice. I think you pulled it off. You so did you know as soon as you saw it? I did. I did. And I didn't have much uh, time to make an, uh, another decision. So this was sort of like it had to work or it was going to be like a leather jacket or something. <laughs> but I, I feel really good in it. I do feel. Well, you look good. We're going to let you go work that room. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, nice Have a to wonderful see you. evening. We're go over to Jared. Who do you've got down there, Jared? Yes, I have Beanie Feldstein from Lady Bird. I love you in this movie so much. I, I, what a joy it must have been for you to be on that set. The, the dreamiest thing that's ever happened to me. I truly think of my life as like pre Lady Bird and post Lady Bird. It feels like a very specific marker on my timeline of my life. Um, it changed. It changed my life. It, it put me on Broadway, and now I'm here. And I mean, I just I couldn't be more grateful for it on a career level, but also on a personal level. Those people are my family now. Yeah. Well, and and. The movie, of course, is also being lauded so much for the behind the scenes. You've got Greta, who wrote and directed a, a lot of women. It's a, it's a very female-centric film. And, and, but what's so intriguing is that a lot of men I know who've seen it are, they can identify as well. They get it, they, that, that teenage, those years. Are you hearing that a lot from people? Yeah, absolutely. And you know, I've heard Greta say this before, but the more specific something is, the more mm. universal it ends up being. So you layer in all those really specific details, and then all of a sudden you have something that weirdly relates to people even more. And so it is such a female movie. It's a female story, and the mother-daughter story is the center of it. But every person has a mother, a daughter, a brother, a sister, a friend who has been in that situation or is in that situation. So I think I think men definitely relate to it, and it's so special to be like, even though Lady Bird's a girl, I feel like that's my relationship with my mom, you know? Uh, you are, of course, in the uh, that uh, Best Picture nominee. If you could be in any of the others, which one would you have wanted to be in? Ooh, that's such a good question. I thought Get Out was incredible, and watching that in a theater was one of my favorite theater-going experiences of my life. So, you know, maybe Not Allison Williams had a little sister or cousin or something. There you go. Maybe we can bring that up to someone. Maybe it can happen somewhere else. Yeah. Uh, congratulations, thank and and thank you so much. I'm it's so such honored. a pleasure. So yeah. Much. Take this all in. Enjoy. Have thank a great you. night. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Likewise. JD and Lola, over to you. Hi there. We're, we're in the, the Thunderdome. It's very, very loud. <laughs> nice to see Beanie Feldstein out there. People might not know, of course, that Beanie is the younger sister of Jonah Hill and a local L.A. person, a graduate of Harvard-Westlake School, a local girl who made good. And she's appearing in MAME. She actually, um, I'm sorry, hello, Dolly. I think I said MAME, which would be incorrect Twitter. That's okay. Um, but anyway, there she There are no got, mistakes on the red carpet. There are no mistakes. There's only um, improvisation, yeah, as we say. Love. So of all the people we've seen thus far, i got to say that Three Billboards cast is just amazing. Really fun to see them. We were just hearing about how they all sort of danced and kind of hung out offset. That was a pretty intense movie. It's interesting because the only other dancer that I want to see tonight is Sam Rockwell. Sam Rockwell is known for his dancing. So if he wins tonight, I'm sure he's going to bust a move up and down that stage. So I'm really excited to see if Sam Rockwell actually wins tonight. Expect he, some dancing from him, too. He's Not just the three billboards, folks, but the whole, the the whole, whole cast thing. will be he joining is, he him. He's the best dancer I have seen ever in really? Hollywood. Yeah, it's right. very, very good. Well, that's a bit of an exaggeration. Jared, who's yeah. your favorite dancer? Yeah. Or what do you have for us down at the other end? 
Well, I would break into a song, but you know, you, you probably don't want to hear me sing. That's all right. But these guys know a thing or two about that. Binge Pastic, Justin Paul, they are nominees for the second year in a row here tonight for The Greatest Showman. This Is Me is the song, guys. First of all, congratulations. Second of all, is this a total pinch me moment? Totally. It would be more of a pinch me moment if you started breaking out in a song. No, 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 no. Sealed the deal. That's what everybody here really wants. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you guys need me inside for the show, no, you went with it. But are the rumors true what I hear that uh, Kiela may not be able to perform tonight? That is not it's true. Not true as far as oh. we know. We've heard she is a little sick, a little under the weather. She's, I think she was a little bit sick this okay. week, but I, but she's, she's, look, Kiela Settle is like Broadway royalty. Yes. Eight times a week, she shows up and does her thing. I can't imagine a world where she's not on that stage come uh, come come time for the song. Exactly. She's a fighter. Yeah. Uh, we were just talking a little bit ago how this movie just keeps to, uh, seems to keep climbing and going and going. It has is, it is kind of defied um, some not fantastic critical reviews, but audiences have loved this, and so much of it has been because of the music. That's uh, kind of a pretty nice compliment, I would imagine, to hear that you, you know, your work is boosting this in some unimaginable way, I suppose. Uh, well, we think that it's uh, it's the cast. We have an amazing director, yeah. and all of these people were so inspiring to us in creating the songs in the first place. Right. And it's also the audience. You know, we've been championed by audiences who are really excited about musicals and really about uh, excited about embracing what musicals can do. So we're we're thrilled that people have found the movie, that they're uh, taking on the songs and making their own versions of them. You go on YouTube, and people are embracing the messages of these songs. It's about inclusion and diversity and yeah. and self love, and, and we're really proud to be a part of that. Yeah, and uh, honestly, if the music is boosting it, we d we don't sit in a vacuum and make up those songs. We're sitting with the with the screenwriter, with the director, with the choreographer, creating those song moments all together. So, all of their work is baked into our work. That's the great thing about making a musical is that it's sort of everybody coming together to speak one language for 90 minutes or two hours. So it's it's a celebration of everybody, really. If uh, you could have written a song for any of this year's Best Picture nominees, what would it have been? Oh my God. I mean, it would have been for me The Shape of Water just to challenge, like, just because for the challenge of it. Yeah. I, I, I think what whatever I would have come up with for the first draft would have been terrible and unworthy of the film, but it would have just been a great challenge as a songwriter to think, like, what, how can I create a crazy moment? And that's what Alexander Desplat did so well also, is giving voice to two voiceless characters and figure out how, what is that musical expression. You know, what the beautiful thing about musicals can do is go inside the head of a character and, and sing and tell their internal thoughts. So it, it's actually, it could be really uh, ripe we're for we're musicalization. Talking about doing it as a mu no, we're not talking no. about it. <laughs> Whoa. Big announcement here right now. Shape of Water is becoming a musical. Is that what it, no, no? Okay, okay. Not but it certainly is, no. certainly is beautiful. It's certainly yes, beautiful. it is. And actually, it probably could be a Broadway musical. We'll see. Go talk to Guillermo about that yeah. tonight. Find him. Talk. <laughs> Guys, congratulations. Thank Have a so great much. night. Nice Thank you so much. JD and Lola, over to you. Well, hi. We've got Kristen Anderson Lopez and Robert Lopez, who wrote the song Remember Me from Coco. And they've brought some extras here as well. It's a real family affair tonight, isn't it? This is Katie. This hi. is Annie. Hi. We promised them when we were here for Let It Go, they were too little. And we promised when we came back, if we ever came back, that they would be our dates. And here we are tonight, and it's the best way to do this. We're having so much fun. Yeah. Who has the best mom ever? <laughs> we do. We do. <laughs> what other movies are you most excited to see, people you're most excited to see besides Coco? Uh, well, we, we know we are sitting behind uh, um, the director of Shape of Water, so we're excited, excited. about that. Um, there were so many incredible movies. If, if we got a chance to talk to Greta Gerwig. That'd be so um, cool. That'd we saw really Lady nice. Bird together um, when she was sick one day, and it was a really wonderful mother-daughter experience. Yeah, that's yeah. a great mother-daughter relationship. You should really it emulate really that. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good talking point. Yeah. It's a good entry. It's Never throw yourself out of a car when it's moving. Okay. <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> I'm pretty sure on the that movie. <laughs> What did, you, what did you make of Lady Bird? That's clearly been a huge hit. It's resonated with audiences. What did you make of Lady Bird? Give me your quick review. I really enjoyed it. I thought um, I thought it was just a really beautiful movie, and I, I hope it wins Best Picture, personally. I see you both are wearing Time's Up pins. Why was it important for you to represent for the Time's Up movement today? Well, 
Um, it's, it, we're having a really interesting and important conversation in our society right now. Um, and I feel that the category that we are nominated for tonight is a very interesting one because it is at least 50% diverse. And for the first time in any category I've ever been nominated, it's almost 50-50 for gender representation, um, meaning it's almost 50-50 men and women nominees. That doesn't often happen. And our category could be one of the first First, to change the change the attitudes, and maybe every category will start to look like this. So we are already seeing immediate effects of the Times Up movement. Music always points the way. It's always the most diverse, and it, and we, it leads the way into a better world because music doesn't have borders. Music doesn't have borders. Um, I'm going to let you guys go. Have a great time. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, guys. One of the most infectious and Talk fun movies of the year. Family Coco. Affair. Wonderful. Jared, who do you have at the top of the red carpet? Well, I have over here uh, the director of Call Me By Your Name, Luca Guadagnino, and his fellow producers, gentlemen and lady. Congratulations on uh, this nomination. Very well deserved. What is it like to be walking this carpet right now? It's fantastic. It's really, it, it, it's kind of easy and it's fun. It's beautiful. Yes, I think we are enjoying ourselves. It's a long way from Crema, Italy, but it's pretty amazing to be here. Yeah. Uh, this film has captured the hearts of so many people who have watched it. There is a very specific sensibility to it, a pacing, a beauty. Would, would you say this was a difficult film to, to craft just because of balancing all of that with the kind of story you were telling? I would say actually the opposite, mm -hmm. because uh, the uh, kind of attitude that everybody had from behind the, seat, behind the camera and in front of the camera was really organic, and we went through the shooting very smoothly. No, it was really smooth. Uh, uh, Timothy, yesterday, won Best Actor at the Spirit Awards. Uh, very exciting moment. I think he was very surprised and shocked. Watching that happen, of course, it's not even his first award this award season, but what's that mean for all of you to see that success, that recognition for him? I think we first met Timmy three, four years ago, and we never met anyone else. He was the first person we met, and we knew immediately that he was this character. He was Elio. To see the whole world sort of responding in the way that we all responded has been fantastic. I mean, Timothy is a force of nature. He's a very committed and serious actor, but he's also able to open up and not put a shield in front of the camera. So this is a testament of a, the greatness of this young man, and I think we're going to see much more in the future. I would agree. Congratulations to you all. Have a fantastic night. Good luck. Thank you so much. JD and Lola, over to you. Well, it was a frenzy. It was so much fun. We will still be here for the remainder of the red carpet. And it was, uh, it was an Oscars to remember, I think. My highlight, I would guess, would be seeing all those three billboards folks and actually just starting to see people roll down the red carpet in such amazing, colorful outfits. This, this is sort of an optimistic, upbeat Oscars after a kind of heavy award season. I think it's been an extraordinary evening. It's just getting started. It's going to be a night to remember. I'm so excited to have been here with you. Thank you so much for My being the best co-host ever. And let's let's go toss to Jess. Hey, Jess. Hey, Jess. How you doing up there, Jess? What's going on, Jess? What's going on, Back Jess? again here with Andrea Laventhal and Sarval Comerson. Andrea, what are you seeing so far that excites you on the red carpet? Oh, my God, Allison Janney. She walked in in that gorgeous red Reem Acra, and everybody went, wild she is wearing over 128 million 128 carats of diamonds four million dollars 128 million dollars <laughs> that would be impressive dollars and um she's sparkling like unbelievable i'm That's so excited great. about Jane fonda looks amazing too all in white just great amazing everyone was screaming for her here too Sara, we have gone through all of the big categories tonight we are predicting who's going to win and we are now at Best Picture. So let's run through those and make our final gigantic prediction of the night. Call Me By Your Name, that nominated, that's kind of a, a little movie that came out of nowhere. It's a, it premiered in Sundance last January. It's just the momentum has never stopped for it. Darkest Hour. It's like the other half of Dunkirk. Yeah, it's, it is. It's about yeah. the same event. It is. Same Operation event Dynamo. Dunkirk. And then Dunkirk, of course, 
directed by Christopher Nolan, getting his very first Oscar nomination for directing. And I believe it has eight nominations overall tonight. The big success story of the night is this next movie, Get Out. Yes, it's actually been, it came out over a year ago. Yeah. And it's made a billion dollars. And one of the very few movies to come out really early in the year yeah. and then get a bunch of Oscar nominations, the other being Silence of the Lambs. I know, that's amazing. Yeah, also another thriller. Movie. Yeah. yeah. Um, Lady Bird, five nominations. Everybody loves this movie. I also like yeah. that both Lady Bird and Get Out, it's their first movie. It's their debut films from those yeah. filmmakers. Greta Gerwig and Jordan Peele. Yeah. Um, Jordan Peele for for Get Out has the trifecta, nominated for screenplay as director and best picture as producer, which is really rare and the first African American to get that honor. Only a third person overall. The other two were James L. Brooks for Terms of Endearment and, and Warren Beatty, Beatty <laughs> for Heaven Can Wait. That's right. I don't know why it's my favorite fact. I just keep repeating it. All right, Phantom Thread. <laughs> Kind of a surprise because it did really well in the Oscar nominations, but not as well during uh, the er earlier uh, Guild Awards. Yeah, it stuff. snuck in there. I think probably because it's Daniel Day Lewis's last movie, there's a lot of momentum for that. All right, we've got 20 seconds left. We've got The Post, <laughs> we've got The Shape of Water, we've got three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri. Who's going to win? Prediction, go. Three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri. All right, it's a very tight race, though. All right. This has been Red Carpet Live, brought to you by Farmers Insurance. Thank you, people fans. Thank you, Lola and JD and Jared, for coming. And have a great time watching the Oscars tonight.